today's webinar is Let's Get Pumped, you can do a Bike to School event. All of our presenters are here to talk about why introducing biking and group events are worth the effort and can be successful with just a little bit of advanced planning. First, we'll hear from Mark Wyatt, Executive Director of the Iowa Bicycle Coalition. He's been leading that group since 2006, and among other initiatives, he's been focusing on education for users of all ages and comfort levels. With that experience, he's going to cover the benefits kids and families get from biking together. Mark will turn it over to Christine Gilliard arthur PE teacher at Gladys Noon Spelman Elementary School in Chevrolet, Maryland. Christine has been a veteran event planner for walking and biking events, and she has some great tips and lessons learned to share for handling events that specifically encourage bicycling. With all of that, it's no surprise that she's 2012's Maryland Elementary Physical Education Teacher of the Year. Then we'll hear from Don Cross, School Safety Coordinator for the City of Phoenix. He's responsible for working with 50 K-12 schools on pedestrian and vehicle traffic safety issues. Don has done a great job coordinating events that include multiple schools. For all of you big event planners out there, Don has advice for putting events together at the community level. To round out the speaker's panel, we'll hear from Nancy Pullen Sufert, Associate Director of the National Center for Safe Routes to School. She's going to formally introduce the Walk and Bike to School website that was launched last year. She'll point out a few resources that you might find helpful when you get started planning your event. And after that, we'll open the floor for questions. Take it away, Mark. Hi there. My name's uh, Mark White. I'm the Executive Director for the Iowa Bicycle Coalition. Uh, we've had a Safe Routes to School program that we've run since, I believe, 2007, and has enabled our organization to get involved in a lot of different schools across the state. Um, but it's important to remember that the Iowa Bicycle Coalition may be a little bit different than a lot of the, the programs that, uh, that are tuned into this webinar, um, because we're a statewide organization. We don't work in a specific school district or school itself. Uh, we're, we're looking at the statewide picture, so that's enabled us to take kind of a more bird's eye view uh, of Bike to School Day and work with a lot of different programs. To do this, we've got some partners that we've worked with. Um, amongst them is uh, our friends with uh, uh, Live Healthy Iowa, which is a, uh, um, an organization that uh, um, is uh, uh, promoting uh, uh, walk to school day events uh, and uh, a contest, uh, if you will, to get kids uh, walking and biking in, in their uh, in their prospective schools. A uh, second uh, group that we're working with is the Healthiest State Initiative, and this is a, a uh, initiative sponsored by our state's governor um, to try to raise Iowa in the uh, the uh, healthiest state uh, uh, polls. Uh, and try to raise the wellness of our uh, of our communities. And then finally, the Department of Public Health, um, who has a great uh, network of, of, uh, of public health professionals across the state, so it makes it easy to uh, disseminate information down to the local level uh, when you have uh, 99 county resources that you can you can tap into. Um, We've always always celebrated Bike to Work Week, uh, uh, and we've tried to include a, in the past at least a uh, Bike to Work uh, or a Bike to School Day, um, but it really hasn't fit well. Uh, it's difficult uh, uh, to make that transition between schools and 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 bike commuting uh, for adults. Uh, so um, we really was excited to see that uh, uh, Bike to School Day um, kind of. Uh, had its own own day um, that we could uh, focus our, our Safe Routes to School program energies onto. Um, we also had to uh, do a little bit of consideration of ages for bicyclists and, and um, how safe it is for younger children. And this has been a community by community basis. Um, I know in some of Iowa's smaller and more rural communities that don't have a lot of traffic volume that we have to worry about, um, younger children are, are routinely able to bicycle with Without, uh, without much difficulty or hazard or safety issues. Um, but in some of our larger communities, that, uh, that becomes more difficult. So it's uh, one of those things that we do want to encourage our communities to, to look at the safety uh, um, uh, measures and, and see what we can do to uh, participate. Um, of course, as I said before, we also want to make things fun, build excitement, uh, and uh, make things uh, kind of cool and exciting for the kids. Um, first picture I have over here is, I believe, one of our middle schools, uh, which you have a teacher that's uh, kind of engaged.
engage the students to, to ride their bike to work uh, during one day. Of course, if he's going to do it, uh, they think it's even even cooler that uh, they can participate with the teacher in this fashion. Um, another uh, uh, bike and walk to school day uh, where the parents and the, and the kids get to participate together. Uh, and this is over in Spencer, Iowa, where we have kind of one of the one of the bike champions and fanatics out there that really got excited. And I believe they're uh, in addition to the bike to school day running a, a regular bicycle train uh, that uh, runs on a regular basis uh, to school. Um, also exciting and another resource that we really try to take advantage of is, is the uh, uh, bike to school.org website. Um, this has been a great tool with a lot of good information, uh, kind of one-stop shopping for, for this event so we don't uh, worry about replicating any of this on our own. Um, but some of the advices that they give that we think are outstanding, it's in start big or start small. Um, there's probably a tendency since it's like the school day and it's really exciting uh, to get people to think big and, and see how many how many bicycles we can we can uh, um, get to school on one particular day. Um, we're also you know encouraging uh, um, schools to think almost on a neighborhood level and, and keep things small and and increase the parent participation and uh, neighborhood participation. So uh, keeping small units but building up the school program together, I think, is a, is a good step that you could do. One of the tools that we do have available to us is uh, a lot of bike safety freebies. Um, these are everything from uh, wear a helmet magnets to uh, education curriculums to stickers to reflective dots to with share the road safety cards and posters and all those items are, are available. Um, we do the uh, the DOT offers them and they, they produce the materials and we do the distribution for them. Um, and last year we had about um, uh, items that were sent out to 23,000 different uh, different students. Of course, bike to school day in May we get unreasonably busy doing shipments of, of uh, boxes of things to classrooms, but uh, it's uh, really a good opportunity to get kids out there. Uh, it's amazing also what, what kids will do for stickers, and then that produces a, a, a good opportunity for individual schools to create a, a measuring stick uh, for how much participation that we had. Um, we had a, a school in Ankeny, um, and this is a walk to school day event, um, but we brought uh, 200 stickers, uh, 400 kids in the school, we knew half were bust. And then we ran out of stickers. Uh, we had to resort to high fives, but it gave us an idea that over 200 students participated in that in that course. So more than the ones that would actually have uh, have uh, walked. Uh, some of the students that bust would go to their friend's house and then walk the rest of the way. So anyhow, but a good measuring stick on the on the stickers to know how many students are participating. Um, Probably more important than a walk to school day event, but uh, bike to school day, you really need to consider the, the bike routes that are available for students to uh, to participate in. Um, so this probably brings in a little bit more of the walking school bus element where you need to do some advanced planning of, of what's going to be available for students to use. Um, you also have the ability to do some, since the one day event, some street closures um, that may help facilitate uh, additional students that are are going to be participating. Um, it's a really good way to get the community involved, especially if you can you can facilitate that opportunity. But uh, um, bike routes and, and doing some mapping of what the routes will be uh, on a neighborhood level, and then uh, facilitating facilitating street closures might really make your event uh, uh, successful. Um, and then another thing that, uh, as an advocate, that we kind of have to uh, judge on, on how much we're, we advocate on is sidewalk bicycling. Uh, we know, at least in Iowa, that sidewalk bicycling can be particularly crash prone uh, because of driveways and intersections and turning issues. Uh, but at some point, uh, kids don't have the, uh, the ability to judge gaps in traffic and uh, um, that, that speed and bike handling capacity. Uh, you may need to uh, facilitate sidewalk bicycling uh, as long as it makes it safe for the kids and the pedestrians. I think that's the, the big key is that what we can do uh, to make it safe. Uh, also, bikes on campus policies uh, probably need to be examined in, in the uh, any uh, bike to school day environment. 
Um, some uh, some schools, at least some of the schools that we work in, uh, don't allow bikes to be ridden on campus. They need to go to the edge of the property line just because there's such a heavy uh, pedestrian um, area um, that, that just doesn't mix well with having kids on bikes, especially kids that may not have uh, the best handling skills um, uh, to be able to, uh, to, to get through uh, heavy pedestrian traffic areas. So uh, examining what those policies are and potentially allowing kids to uh, or, uh, um, making sure that the kids know what the policies are in advance of your bike to school day would be important. Um, bike parking is also going to be an issue having that uh, end of trip destination facilities. Um, so you don't end up with just a big pile of, of bicycles. Um, this is one of our elementary schools uh, in Iowa City. Um, and uh, they have uh, used their tree, commandeered their tree for helmet storage also. Um, but uh, their uh, their bike parking isn't isn't the utmost, and then when we have a big event, then it, it really uh, taxes out their bike parking system. Um, similar, this is uh, um, Gardner Elementary in uh, North Liberty, Iowa, um, where when they do their their bike and, and walk events, their their bike racks become uh, fairly inundated. Um, but they try to use the fencing and the playground area just as much as they can to uh, handle the overflow uh, for bikes. Security isn't typically an issue in these communities, but uh, uh, it's more of an organization issue that we run into as, as a problem. Uh, and then finally, communication is, is one of those opportunities. This is at St. Cecilia's, which is a um, Catholic school in Ames, Iowa. Um, they have a, a father who picks the, the children up, and, and this is just the point that I'm trying to make, is, is try to communicate what, what bike to school day is and what, what isn't and, and what is safe. So as much as you can do to kind of open the door and communication with the parents, I think, is, is a good step. Um, so this is just my, my final slide and hoping that your, your bike to school day is a big success, and, and I look forward to uh, any questions that you have at the end of our webinar, and uh, look forward to hearing what the other presenters have to say. So I'm going to turn this over to Christine and Katie to switch it over. Thank you, Mark. Do you have my screen? Go ahead and launch in the slide view. You're ready to go. My name is Christine Gilliard Arthur. I am the PE teacher representing the Gladys Noon Spellman family. We appreciate the opportunity to share our best practices with you all um, with our successful Bike to School Days. We are located in Chevrolet, Maryland. Gladys Noon Spelman is a student population of 564 students. We house kindergarten through sixth grade. We are a Title I school that has a farm rate of 86%, that's free or reduced meals. 90% of our student population is able to walk or ride their bikes to school. We're also a nationally recognized Healthy Schools program through the Alliance for Healthier Generation. We're currently on bronze status for the 2010 and 2000, 2012. We are also a Maryland State Department of Education Physical Education Demonstration School. That there's only 11 in the state of Maryland, and the fir we are the first and only in Prince George County Public Schools. Um, this is my principal, uh, Miss Holiday, riding her bike to school. Why does Gladys New Sport um, Spellman support Bike to School Day? Well, our major initiative is Healthy Schools Program through the Alliance for Healthier Generation. So it helps increase physical activity. It also teaches safe bicycling and pedestrian skills to children. It reduces the traffic congestion, and it allows us to have good quality family time together. Not just family time um, with peers, but teachers and staff and community members. It also um, gives them awareness for the concern for their environment, and it's fun. And it is for Gladys New Spellman. It's a biannual event. We do one in October and one in May, and we are in year four, going into year five. So some good planning and best practices for us is the first and most important thing, in my opinion, is the buy-in. We need to have buy-in from administration 
students, parents, community members, um, stakeholders such as the mayor, the, gover the local government, state government, police, AAA, safe routes to school, whatever way that we can get in. And this is my principal, Susan Holliday. This is Mayor Mike, the mayor of Cheverly. Um, that's me, the physical education teacher. This is Amy Wiley, the PE supervisor for health and physical education, recreation, and dance. And this is RJ Elkridge. He is a parent as well as a council member for the city of Maryland, uh, for the town of um, Cheverly. And this is his daughter, Sophia. The other thing that Gladys Newt Spellman has is a school on us council. This council sets standards for physical, physical activity, nutrition, and curriculum wants and needs. So we, if we want it and we need it, um, we put it in place to be successful at Gladys Newt Spellman. Some of the other important things are setting dates for the events at the beginning of the year, setting them in August when we go back to school. That way it doesn't conflict with other dates. Um, it's a priority and you have ample planning time. Um, it allows for you to start that designated starting point if you want to ride from homes or um, designate a particular area and ride together. It also gives you time to think about targeting student, the whole total student population um, and community members to participate. So Bike to School Day is for everybody at Gladys New Spelman Elementary School. Um, we foster a lifelong appreciation for walking and biking. It allows for students to develop important skills um, that includes all students, as well as their parents, grandparents, aunties, uncles, cousins of a cousin. Um, we also have a pedestrian bike safety unit in PE. Um, the curriculum is a two-week curriculum in May. This is, encompasses all safety lessons for the whole um, student population. Students learn how to ride if they don't know how to ride and also helps build motivation so they continue to learn how. Um, we encourage the daily walking and biking piece throughout the whole entire school year. We have implemented um, walking school buses or bike trains which are what we call WOW Wednesdays and that's a walk on Wednesday. Um, on the colder weather days that hasn't been successful for WOW Wednesdays, we do have an early bird fitness club that the students and in the picture, you see one of our students on a wave board, actually, um, doing weaving and maneuvering during the curriculum, during their physical education lesson. Gladys Noon Spellman, back to school, bike to school. They have designated starting points. We do meet at a central location in Legion Park in the middle of the town. It is a, not even a mile from our school, but it is a centralized location for a majority of the school population, front and back. Um, easy access to um, complete the journey for us, completing the journey to school together. Um, we communicate regularly with them. We start in August with a yearly calendar of projected dates, um, reminding them monthly, um, flyers with maps. We have a bike policy that goes out. We have banners that are hung year long, the knowing that this is a way of life and not just a one-time event kind of thing. In some of the pictures you see that the, we give away a bike in May and then we have racing numbers and then those students um, always encompassing the whole student population because we don't want to isolate and we want to encourage all everyone to participate. So we have a walk or bike at school so some of the students share their bikes and they ride in the bus circle um, out there. It also We also have a thing called GM and Minutes where physical activities are planned um, which is a school-wide initiative, and I'll show you a picture in the next slide. This is a picture of them jamming, which is jamming means just a minute. So it's just a minute of exercise, and if you look in the perimeter, you'll see where the bikes are parked around the back and the parents are jamming with them with their T-shirts, and you'll see some of their incentives for the medals. Um, some of our considerations. Um, one and the most important thing is educating them about the importance of helmets. Um, being in a Title I school and um, high poverty and not easy accessible to those um, safety requirements. We have asked for donations from community. AAA Med Atlantic has been um, superb at providing helmets for our students. Our Safe Routes to School grant. Um, have given us um, donations to give away to students, raffle them off. At one point, we gave them to whoever participated on our very first one. Um, bikes, we also want to consider the safety of their bicycles. 
Now, the Bike to School Day in May is usually is the culminating activity for their PE curriculum, their bike safety and pedestrian curriculum. So they've learned ABC Quick Spin Check, but we do initiate and have them quickly go through the ABC Quick Spin Check so they can know how to check their bike and make sure that it's safe for riding. The bicycling routes are established with the help of our Safe Routes to School Liaison and, and the town officials within the town. You'll see here, and this is Officer Webb um, riding his bike, actually escorting with the kids on the bicycles, and we have several um, police officers who do that with them. They provide assistance for restricting the traffic so that the students are um, riding in the street together, and they hate they aid the um, crossing the street. Um, also, Gladys News Spelman Safety Patrol are there to help assist, as well as multiple parents. And you'll see that students are not just only on bikes, but they're on roller skates, they're on skateboards, they're on scooters, they're walking. Some other additional considerations that um, parking your bikes is a big concern. We do have three bike racks, and we highly encourage the students to use them year-round. But we do label the bikes. They are more than welcome to park them on the perimeter of the gymnasium. We label them with their name, their classroom teacher, so it's easy to identify um, who they belong to. We also have a bike lending system, uh, bike lock lending system, so that if they do not have a bike lock and they do want to ride their bike and they want to put it up on the um, bike rack, they can borrow a lock and lock up their bike for the day. We use that as also as a incentive piece. We've done t-shirts, we've done water bottles. Um, we always uh, rack wall bike off in May. And again, we do the bike locks and little things, uh, the medals that hang around their neck if they completed it or they did the jam in minute to just encourage them to continue motivation. So really, what does this mean for you? You can do it. We can do it. We are team players um, assisting one another. Uh, it truly models healthy behaviors. And most importantly, we want to foster that lifetime movement for loving how to move and why to move, and just have fun with it. Um, I'm going to turn this over to Don. Thank you, Christine. Are you all hearing me? Oh, thank you, Christine. I, I cut out for a second. <laughs> uh, my name is Don Cross. I'm the uh, school safety coordinator for the City of Phoenix Street Transportation Department. And today I'm going to talk to you about planning multi-school bike-to-school day events. In this presentation, you will learn how to reach out to schools, how to engage students, how to engage police in events, how to reach out to partners, how to plan events, and how to get media involved. Here's a little history on the city of Phoenix. Um, we started doing the uh, Bike to School Day events before the national event started in 2010. We did uh, three Bike to School Day events. In 2011, we jumped to um, eight schools doing the events, and we added uh, free bike training assemblies, and we did 16 of those. In 2012, we jumped and doubled to 16 schools, did 30 free bike training assemblies and added five bike rodeos, um, which we modified and added some additional stuff to. And then in 2013, coming up, uh, we've invited 47 schools to participate. We have 25 bike to school day events, 31 assemblies, and 32 bike rodeos. We've educated over 30,000 students since we've uh, begun training uh, in 2010. Um, how to reach out to schools, this is a picture of um, one of our Bike to School Day events uh, with Stetson Hills Elementary. My suggestion when you're reaching out to the schools is be aggressive. Um, you know, don't wait for the schools to uh, contact you. It's always important that you are out there uh, knocking on their doors, calling them, emailing them. You know, uh, don't wait around. Um, if you want to put multi-events together, you really have to be uh, uh, steadfast and uh, aggressive in your approach. Um, you know, and, and I invite the schools, so I make the schools feel lucky to participate. Um, 
you know, I send them invitations and uh, tell them about the amount of schools that are going to participate, um, the amount of schools from their district that are going to participate, and it makes them feel special to be a part of it. Um, and also, when you're doing the events, um, make sure you're controlling each of the elements uh, of the preparation. Um, if you leave things to other people, sometimes that's how things get dropped in the end. Uh, these are my contact steps when I'm uh, starting to put my, my events together. Um, I'll formulate a list of schools who uh, I would like to uh, ask to participate. Um, the way I formulate the list, uh, I will uh, go through all of our eight council districts and determine uh, which schools um, have expressed a desire to uh, participate in bike events, and um, I help to encourage that with the bike events that we schedule with the city. I'll send out invites to those schools who uh, are on the list. Uh, I will uh, follow up once I've uh, sent out the invites, and when it's all said and done, I'll create a final schedule. Here's an example of uh, the school list with uh, schools from our eight council districts, and I've laid out dates and uh, uh, things for me to uh, contact them about. Here's a sample invitation that I send out to the schools. Here's a sample schedule um, of the uh, uh, of my final schedule once everything's in place, so I've got something to refer back to with my multiple events. Um, definitely engaging students uh, is important. Um, you have to emphasize the fun. Uh, we make sure when we're doing education, we do it through entertainment. Uh, we try to challenge the students with contests and we provide the students incentives for participating. Uh, emphasizing the fun, uh, here's an example of uh, students who participated in our bike decorating contest. Um, this was a ride we did at Canyon Springs Elementary. Uh, so you can see how the students really uh, took the contest and made it their own. Uh, here's an example of our education through entertainment. Uh, we'll have uh, special guests come to our assemblies, um, but they all have uh, an element, whether we're doing biking or walking, uh, that talks about the element of that day. Um, here in the picture you see Ronald McDonald with uh, McGruff the crime dog. Um, all of these uh, entertainers are important to our education process. Here's some examples of assembly presentation topics. Um, you know, we cover uh, Certainly looking left, right, left, writing on the right, using crosswalks, how stranger danger is out there, how important it is to uh, have proper nutrition and hydration. That's something a lot of people forget. And especially in our climate uh, out in Phoenix, uh, it's very important that folks uh, stay hydrated. Uh, bike helmets, of course. Um, how to use proper hand signals when you're riding bikes. Uh, how students, when they're riding bikes, should be following the posted signs and that they're actually uh, vehicles on the roadway like other cars, and also educating uh, their parents about these topics. Here's an example of some uh, incentives we provide, uh, t-shirts, helmets, water bottles, backpacks, things like that. It really gets the students motivated to participate. Oh, how to engage police. Police are very important to the events. Um, they help not only with uh, crowd control during the uh, bike events, but they also participate in the education assemblies as well. Uh, getting police involved. They go back to being aggressive. Um, you know, if you're going to just call them and email them, a lot of times they're too busy to get back with you. So it's very important that you go and visit them at their precincts. I have uh, scheduled uh, meetings with each of our eight uh, police precincts um, every year when I do the events. I sit down with them and we go over uh, the events that are going to be happening in their precincts areas um, and go over the routes and determine if things need to be tweaked or changed or how many police are needed for each of the events. Uh, when I say be prepared, um, 
you yourself need to be prepared when you go to visit them. Um, they will respond to you if you have a plan of action. Um, if you aren't prepared and ready to go, they're less likely to want to get involved. Uh, and also, when you're at the events, it's important to provide direction to police. Um, they're willing to do anything you ask them to do as far as safety and protection, but you have to be the one that gives them the final directions on the routes, where they should be stationed, and other things that are uh, helpful to the event. Uh, engaging partners is important. Um, we have a lot of partners that work with us, and when we sit down with them, we're, we sell our program first to the partners um, and tell them the importance and things that, uh, that we're doing. Then we see if the partner is uh, on the same page with us. Um, and then once they uh, decide they want to work with us and get on the same page with us, at our events we sell their program within our program. And I would encourage you, anybody that works with partners, to do the same thing and uh, sell their program within your program. Here's an example of local partners that I work with on my various events. Um, everybody's uh, very willing to help and are very active and are very helpful. Um, building an event, there's certainly uh, important elements to that. Um, like I said before, identifying the schools is huge. Um, reviewing and creating the event route. Um, Mark talked a little bit about that at the beginning of the presentation, and I certainly agree. Um, we're having a little technical issue here. Okay, sorry about that. I'm back. <laughs> um, you know, uh, creating the, the event routes is important um, because when you uh, are laying out a route, it's important that the school and the police and everybody uh, is on board with, uh, with what you've created. Coordinating the schedule dates with schools, um, you know, it's real easy when you're doing multi-events to all of a sudden step on an event you've already uh, set up. Um, or a school will come back and say, you know, I, I don't know if that date's going to work. Maybe I should uh, try this other date. So it's very important that you're on top of your schedule so you don't have any of those conflicts. Um, and like I talked about uh, with police, it's certainly important to arrange the events with them and how much coverage is needed at each of the events. Um, organizing the events with your training partners. Um, we have partners that help us not only in our Bike to School Day event itself, but also the assemblies, and we have meetings to go over things before that. And when we bring in entertainers, it's important that uh, not only uh, are they on board with uh, your event, but also uh, what you expect them to do uh, at the events. And the last thing I always do is end up having meetings with my staff to talk about um, the, the events that are coming up and where we need the most help. Here's an example of an event flyer um, that we send out to the schools. Um, we create it uh, ourselves uh, in the city, city of Phoenix through our GIS program. The, uh, Flyers are usually in English and Spanish, and the uh, flyers are nice to give to the schools, so it um, allows them to uh, better advertise the events. Uh, media getting involved is very important. Um, this is me uh, meeting with uh, Channel 15, uh, ABC, uh, at one of my events. Um, how uh, you do that, you uh, when you're a uh, Jurisdiction, um, like I am with uh, the City of Phoenix, uh, we have uh, PIOs, our public information officers that we work with to uh, start getting the word out about the events. Uh, they're very helpful folks. If you are on the outside and you would like to uh, work with your city jurisdiction, um, it, the PIO, PIO may be the first person you uh, call, and they'll get you in touch with the proper uh, department to work with. 
Um, sending invitations to uh, public figures and government representatives. Uh, I do that similar to how I invite uh, my schools. Um, I seek out folks who have a vested interest in whatever area I'm doing events in and target those folks. And a lot of times they respond and want to participate. Uh, working with your Safe Routes to School uh, coordinator from the state is a good idea. A lot of times they have uh, a lot of good information and a lot of other contacts um, on the national level that maybe you hadn't thought of. And then if you have a local COG or MPO uh, at the, uh, that works with the counties, that's another group that you certainly can work with and they have additional contacts as well. Uh, here's some tips and advice from the events I've done um, and things that I push myself to do each year. I come up with a list of uh, things that I would do better uh, and add more to my events. Um, I always look to uh, add more themed events, and I would suggest you guys do that as well. Students really respond to uh, crazy hair, crazy t-shirt, hat day kind of events. Um, it makes it a lot more fun for them to be involved. Um, always looking for more incentives. Um, if there's more nonprofits or grant opportunities that you can find in your community, um, certainly look for those. Um, because the more incentives you have to provide, the more folks want to be involved. Uh, do more with education. Um, I've put together a, uh, uh, a lesson uh, curriculum for uh, bike safety that I've been taking to the classrooms. Um, I suggest anything you can do in the classrooms to further engage students is a great idea. Uh, work more with the schools to find champions, either with parent volunteers or with school staff themselves. Um, and if there is an interest from school champions, um, it certainly uh, behooves you to offer training sessions uh, with those parents and school staff. And do what you can to reach out to parents. Uh, I coordinate safety night events at schools um, where I talk with the parents and go over the different events that I do and get them to uh, understand what their students are learning and to get them more involved. Here's lessons I've learned from my events. Um, controlling the age of riders is, is huge. Um, we found that when we had younger riders, younger than third grade, uh, they would be at the back of the line and holding up the line and it would stretch and it would stretch the police coverage and it caused um, a lot of issues uh, for the ride. So definitely important to uh, keep the grade levels at third grade and above. Uh, have enough police at your ride events. Um, you know, crowd control is essential. Um, if you have an event where you've got a couple hundred folks and one policeman, a lot of times that won't work. Certainly have a strong rider at the front of the line. Um, you know, they can provide that uh, experience if they've uh, ridden in um, other rides. Um, I wouldn't trust that role to a kid, if possible. Um, try to have an adult be in that lead role. They also are a big asset to police uh, when they're doing uh, the actual events and having security and safety. You know, think big picture when you're planning events. Um, when you are uh, organizing uh, an event, certainly multi-events, it's important to think about all the elements that are involved with that and try to go through every step and what could go right and what could go wrong. If you've uh, forgotten any details, they become one of these lessons learned. Um, record the events with photos and video if possible. Um, it's great memories to look back at. Uh, they offer great lessons learned. Um, and it's something where you can look at some, an event and go, well, I, I would do this or that, or you know, it helps you understand what you did at that moment and if there was anything you would like to change. And that's it for me. Am I handing it back to Katie or Nancy? Handing it off to me. Uh, my name is Nancy Pullen-Sufert. I'm with the National Center for Safe Routes to School. And um, 
we have the pleasure of organizing National Bike to School Day. And as many of you on the call know, uh, last year was the first um, National Bike to School Day. And we're really excited that it's time to be planning uh, the next one. And um, I wanted to give you just a few quick ideas of the kinds of things that you can find on our website. So I just have four things that I want to tell you about. Um, of course, one of them is registration, and I'm going to tell you about that at the end, but I also want to point out that we already have 150 events um, as of this morning registered for Bike to School Day, and those are across um, 38 different states. So um, we, we have a lot of excitement brewing, and, and we know that, that we're just on the, on the cusp of things. So after hearing Dawn's presentation, which is very impressive uh, in terms of the breadth of things that Dawn does, um, and Christine gave a great example of what it looks like to pull this off when you work within a school um, and, and you're really promoting the physical activity angle. And Mark talked about sort of a broader view of how do you plan events and why do you care about it and looking at things from, um, from an advocate's perspective um, as well and, and, and organizing from, from that view. If you have never done a bike to school event before, um, we have some basic tips on our website that will talk, will walk you through the, the basic stuff that you need to do. Um, and as Mark pointed out, you can start big or you can start small. Um, and we talk about that specifically on our website too. If you are trying to build buy-in um, among parents, um, among other potential partners with the school, you might be interested in um, showing them our annual report. It's just three pages long, but it has some nice pictures, some nice quotes from last year. You can find this on our website. You can also find lots of other resources that might be useful for you. We have tip sheets, including um, ones that are directed to parents that talk about how to help their children be safe bicyclists, and also ones directed to students about how to do that. Both of these particular tip sheets are also available um, in Spanish. Um, something that you heard mentioned by a couple presenters was about planning the ride route. We have um, map a route, which is a walking and, and bicycling Javier. map making tool that's available um, on our website. And um, you can then create, create the maps and then share them with others. You can add icons to it to show where there are crossings, where there are stop signs. You can also add um, where a bike train might have different meetup points along the way. And then all things them. shared either via a uh, unique them. URL or by PDF. They were shaking them. They're not supposed And the fourth and final thing, as I warned you about at the beginning, I just want to remind you, please register your event on our website. So how that, many of um, you were able to get in your Tiger Heart Rate range of 130 to 190? Christine? Christine, we can hear you. Oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. Don't worry. Just, just meet your phone with star six. Thanks. Sorry. Back to you, Nancy. Well, you know, as I mentioned um, a minute ago, Christine is all about thinking about the physical activity um, side of biking to school, and that carries over in, in all facets of her work, um, even right now as we speak. <laughs> so um, please do register your event. We also um, are doing a bike rack giveaway. So for anyone who registers an event, you'll be entered into a drawing uh, to win a bike rack for the school of your choice. We are giving away 10 bike racks um, in partnership with Sarah, and we're really pleased about that. And finally, after the event, please send us your pictures. We love to see them. We love to see them. And we try to post um, some of them on our Facebook page as well. Um, and that is it. So I'm passing it back to you, Katie. All right. Thanks, Nancy. I'm going to switch back. Here we are. We got a bunch of questions, so I am excited to get this part going. Um, first of all, thanks to our, our panelists. This is great. Um, we definitely got a lot of really great questions. Mark, I'm going to turn the first one on to you. Mark, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. Great. OK. So we have, I think we have someone representing from Iowa today. They're asking if, um, for your freebies, is that through um, the state DOT that you get them? Yeah, you can actually go to our Iowa DOT website and, and go to their uh, bike ped page, and uh, and they'll have a link for the, the free items. Wonderful, that's great to know. Christine, we've got next for you. Are you are you back with us? 
I, I thought I was on mute. I apologize. <laughs> no, no, don't worry about it. That's fine. We're just glad we didn't lose you. Um, so, so I have a handful of questions for you, and I bet that, that they're going to be similar for Don and Mark, too, because I know you, you organize events. How do, we'll start with Christine. How do you take on the liability issue? Um, that specifically, someone said, what if someone gets injured along the way? Do you deal with waivers or permission slips? What's, what's your take on, on liability? Do you address it? Um, it's a before school activity and we encourage parent participation and majority of our parents do participate. Um, we do not do a permission slip. Um, we have a biking walking policy. Their parents bring them and they're there. So we haven't had, knock on wood, <laughs> luckily we haven't had any issues. Um, we've had a couple of spills, but we wash them up, clean them up, and they go on their way. <laughs> Mark, Don, have you guys had to deal with a liability issue? Oh, uh, Don. Yeah, yeah, I've had that question come up from time to time. Um, we tend to... Uh, uh, find that the schools who have the most concerns about that will do uh, permission slips. So um, that way if their student wants to participate, it kind of clears the school of that liability and uh, it certainly helps the uh, jurisdiction with that liability as well. Don, I, I, I want to hold you while you got you. Um, I'm sure people will ask if they can see a copy of that permission slip. Is that possible? Um, it's not something that I generate, uh, okay. so it's something that the schools themselves generate, so I rarely see it. Um, it basically goes from the school administration over to the students themselves, so I'm, I'm not even involved in that process. <laughs> cause, oh, um, that's neat. Yeah, so it's not even something that I handle. Well, and the reason I asked is because there are they're also asking um, if they could somehow get a copy of your invitation letter that you send out to schools and to um, your partners. Sure. And if you have a, a handy copy of that checklist, that would be great too. Okay. You bet. All right. We'll find yeah. We'll find a way to get that out. Okay. Right. Christine, I got another question for you. Um, you say in your presentation that 90% of students that attend Gladys Noon Spelman Elementary School can walk or bike to school. Does that mean that they're physically able to, as in they, they um, don't have any handicaps preventing them, or is it because they live close by? What did you mean by that? 90% of them have the ability to, they live close enough to school to walk or bike. So we, we don't have any physical disabilities that would prevent anyone from that Good. That's helpful to know. And another question for you, Christine. Um, the curriculum that you use um, when you do your review of safety, um, so is that available online for free? What do you use? I use the Washington Area Bicycle Association, WABA. Um, they have a statewide bicycle, pedestrian bicycle safety curriculum. Okay. And, it's and it looks like oh, sorry, WABA.org. Dot org. Dot org. WABA.org. Great. Don, I've got another question for you. What okay. is the annual budget? Okay, this is a three-prong question. They want to know what the annual budget is for your program just to put on um, bike and walk to school events. Uh -huh. Where do you get your funding, and how many staff are helping you out pull all those off? Well, um, as far as the funding part, um, we have no additional funding other than my salary that, <laughs> that funds the events. Um, everything else we get as far as incentives, um, our items we get from either our partners or, or from other uh, local jurisdictions. <clears throat> um, so the cost of it is relatively low. Um, the second part of that question was what? Oh, sure. Um, how many staff are helping you? Oh, staff. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, usually uh, I have a staff of about four that um, – help me at the uh, events themselves. Um, but as far as coordination and everything else, I do all that myself. This question is for Mark. Mark, what do you recommend as the maximum distance that you would recommend for bike trains, specifically in grades 6 through 8? Um, we've had a couple different ways that we looked at this. Um, um, we ran into a school situation uh, on a walking school bus issue, but they were also biking, um, and it was in an area where they had uh, uh, 
started hazard busing. Um, we made some changes to the environment, uh, um, adult supervision, and added some time to the, the walk signals. Um, but in the long and short of it, it's one of the things that we decided to, uh, is our policy if there's hazard busing that exists in a particular area, um, we're probably not going to do a program in that in, in that area as far as an organized program. However, um, I, I think you can you can easily um, get a mile or two in uh, biking before school uh, and not have much uh, much time involved, uh, even at the slow pace that, that kids might move. Um, so that that might be uh, one of the things. Um, also, to bounce off your question earlier, we have our website iowasaferouts.org. Um, and it has our activity and, and um, bike pet activity guide, uh, activity and encouragement guide. And you can actually download permission slips and, and uh, parental notifications and things like that. Um, we, we've got it on there so people can copy and paste it and use it. Thanks, Mark. That's great information. Sure. All right. And I think we've got time for one more question. Christine, I'm going to give this one to you. When you say that 90% of your kids are able to walk or bike to school, what do you do with that 10% that have to be bused or driven? How do you keep them involved with the day of your event? Um, we actually have the bike at school or walk at school. So what we do is the bus circle is open. Um, usually we have the Wabba bike trailer, so we have additional bikes that are available for students who are bus riders who do want to get on the bike and they go around the bus circle. And we also do the Jam in Minute where I showed you where the students are doing um, the school-wide uh, just a minute of exercise, so that's a planned routine. Um, the particular one I showed you in the slide was the Just Move by Beyonce from <laughs> the Let's Move .gov from Michelle Obama, First Lady. So uh, there's always something that encompasses all those students to give them an opportunity, whether it was to use the bike, um, to ride in the bus circle, to walk, or to participate in the jam in the jam in minute. Great. Well, I want to thank everybody for coming and thank all of our panelists. You guys have had great input and pointing to a number of real resources that people can use that are available for free and online. We'll, um, we'll figure out a way to get those into everybody because I know those are some, some really important questions.